able to break through and it is my belief that we're dawning an age where the only thing that's going to break through is quality intent. Actually caring about the end user. And you know why? Because it's scalable for the first time. Let me give you a scenario. Somebody walks into a restaurant in New York City, has an amazing time. She's the biggest yenta on the Upper East Side all time. She has a great time. How many people does she tell 10 years ago? Maybe she calls 10 girlfriends, right? Maybe she has a T on Park Avenue and can tell 15 people. Maybe she's even hardcore and writes a couple letters. Now, the most awkward introvert who lives in his mom's basement can go home and tell 6,000 with one link. That is a substantial difference. I was never, bless you, darling, uh, I was never going to become the wine guy of America in the way the old world worked because I was never gonna leave my family. I love my family, I wasn't moving to LA to be discovered, so I had to be there. But I sent the stock boy to Best Buy, buy a $300 camera and started pumping out Wine Library TV every single day and that's how I built to get on the Conan O'Brien show and Ellen and Nightline, all from Jersey, from my office. Because the world is connected today in a way that is so uncomfortable, it's incredible. And the ecosystem is word of mouth. Think about how, how much of your business in this industry is done on word of mouth. I just bought a huge co-op in New York City. Why? Word of mouth. You know, it's personal relationships that close the day in every business, especially this industry. And it is inconceivable for me to think that so many people in this room would not want to go into the trenches of a marketer's dream. There's somebody right now, how many people here go to search.twitter.com every single day? Raise your hand. Every day. There are 12 people in here that are doing that. The fact that you can, now of those 12 people, how many of you know that you can go to search.twitter.com then leave a space to whatever word, and what this does is allows you to search words on Twitter, so you could search looking for an apartment, or looking to sell my place, or whatever people say, which is everything by the way. How many of you that do that every day know that you can hit a space and then put near colon, N-E-A-R colon, and a zip code, raise your hand. Now that's a lot less. There you go, darling, good job. That's a lot less, and all of a sudden, in a business that is local and you're looking to sell in a specific area, so now you can search if you only sell in Beverly Hills, every conversation that is in a 10 10 minute, 10 mile radius of Beverly Hills. And those conversations have just become extremely more valuable to you. I spent millions of dollars. When I start looking at the data of this company, of the average spend on advertising by an agent, by you guys, it's incredible to me. I got excited. I was like, wait a minute, there's a real opportunity here. People are actually spending money. I mean, you could really do something here. Two years ago, I started a consulting company called Vayner Media. We consult, do the social media community management and strategy for PepsiCo, Campbell's, the National Hockey League, Green Mountain Coffee, real businesses. This isn't about my $60 million small entrepreneurial business. These are multi billion dollar Fortune 100 companies. And I don't walk in there and talk to them about this stuff because it's fun or it's interesting. And trust me, they care about the ROI way more than even you do because I'm asking them for millions of dollars in budget. How many people have heard people ask, what's the ROI of social media? Raise your hand, just curious. Every time somebody asks me that and that gets asked of me on an everyday basis. What's the ROI of having a Twitter fan? Or Gary, you want me to spend 10 hours a day on Twitter and Facebook? When am I gonna do my real job? What's the ROI? What's the ROI of the thank you economy? I always ask them, so people are like, well Gary, what's the ROI of social media? I go, I don't know. What's the ROI of your mother? And I mean that, not in a bad way. What is the ROI of your best friend? What's the difference between that friend that really comes through for you and the one that doesn't? There's a lot of things you can't put black and white numbers on, especially when it's early. Remember how many people here laughed at buying Google ads or SEO or whatever else you may be doing today that is a norm in your business. There's plenty of people that didn't want to use Facebook or Twitter. Here's what's happening, my friends. Let me paint you the picture. You are in the people business. So is everybody in the world. People are now talking publicly on the web in a way that we've never seen before. Your ability to mine it with no cost to look at the data and interact with them is zero except the time you put into it. Once you create that emotional context, things happen. 
Wine Library, my business. Let me paint you a picture of what I think the thank you economy is. My business, Wine Library. We're a big wine shop. We've started following all our customers on Facebook and Twitter to get more data on who they are. Yeah, it's Big Brother, but these are things that they share, right? They know people are watching. And so here's what we've done. We took a customer the other day whose last 40 tweets are, I love Jay Cutler, don't be mad at Jay Cutler, he was really hurt, Jay Cutler, will you marry me? He loves Jay Cutler. He's a huge Bears fan, right? We also saw the data shows that he's just ordered three times in a short period of time $10,000 worth of wine, he's a great new customer, right? The thank you economy department, right, by Kristen Murphy at Wine Library, she went to eBay and bought a signed Jay Cutler jersey and we sent it to him in the mail saying, thank you so much for being a new customer of Wine Library. (laughs) Guys, this is a big deal. I promise you that if Toys R Us years ago would have sent me a Jets helmet signed by Ken O'Brien, I would have never went to KB stores once. You know, Joe talked about the handwritten notes and all this. The reason I stand in front of you today, the reason my companies continue to grow, the reason VaynerMedia in 18 months is a $5 million consulting business well on its way to hundreds of millions of dollars and we handle some of the biggest brands in the world is because we understand what's happening very early and here's what's happening. The ability and the complete opportunity to connect with consumers and turn them into lifetime value consumers is here and you guys know that. You guys as an industry know that so much better than so many other people. You know, how many people here have sold multiple locations, let's call it three or more, off the family tree of some person? So it started with one person and then it trickled. Raise your hand. Of course, because you're good and you're here. Of course, that's why when I speak at real estate events, it baffles me that so many people haven't grasped onto this and I know why. Nobody's articulated the value of this. Nobody's painted you why this really matters. Nobody's been able to execute. I looked at some data on the way here. In the last 15 months, 55% of all new homeowners that bought a home were 30 years old or younger. How do you think you're gonna talk to them? You think they're gonna get pumped for those bench ads? or billboards, because I promise you, when they're in a bus, they're looking down at their iPhone. I hate buying outdoor media now. I buy it, because I, by the way, I'm a huge traditional media fan. That's what makes a lot of the corporate people like me. They think I'm gonna come in there and say, I love TV, just do it right. You know, Reebok Hockey did a commercial during the Winter Classic. I was watching it because the NHL was my client and if it did well, we got a kicker bonus. So I was praying that everybody in the world was watching this game on New Year's Day. And I was like, please watch the game. Anyway. I'm watching it, they run a commercial with Sidney Crosby, they're playing, the commercial ends and says if you wanna find out who won, go to, Reebok, go to facebook.com slash Reebok Hockey. In 20 minutes, they had 60,000 new likes, fans on their fan page to see it. They can now market to those 60,000 people for the rest of their lives as long as they're still a fan of that page. Guys, this is about data. How many of you send emails to people? Raise your hand, in bulk form, not one-on-one, as a newsletter or something like that. Raise your hands, please. So if you've been doing it for a while, you know what's happened. Do you guys remember 1998 and 99 and 2000? That stuff worked. It doesn't work as much anymore because we spammed it out. Everybody started sending emails every day because it was converting. Wine Library started off as the weekly email service, then the bi-weekly email service, then the daily email service. And then when I really wanted to push numbers, like, hey, we'll see you twice this day. You know, it got crazy. We've pushed it too far. We've all been in the push business all these years. What happens now is pull. The New Jersey Nets client, somebody tweets the other day, thinking about buying Knicks or Nets season tickets. What do you guys think? We jumped in right away and said, well, we're kind of biased. We'd love to see you. Guy buys season tickets from the Nets because we responded before the Knicks did. Real money. This happens on a daily basis. It's happening every moment. Our customers, your customers, are in the trenches. I get it. I know it's new and it's very time consuming, but it's a commitment. You've gotta reallocate funds. I always say that you have no tweet left behind. I come into companies and say no tweet left behind. Everybody who tweets has to be responded to. They're like, everybody? I'm like, well, do you like them? They're your customer. They just said your Milano cookies were delicious. What, do you wanna just look at them with a blank stare? Everyone. They go, well, how are we gonna do that? That's not scalable. 
I have 900,000 fans, I'm one human being, nobody will do it for me because it's not authentic if my assistant tweets on my behalf and I'm keeping up with it. You're a multi-billion dollar company. How about this, jerk off? Why don't you take three commercials, don't do them that nobody watches, and let's hire nine people to actually care about your end user. What a concept. How are we gonna do this? I don't know, stop throwing cash down the toilet. How are you gonna do this? Maybe you don't buy a Yellow Pages ad this year, guys. You don't need it, promise. (laughs) You're better off going doing smoke signals at the top of the building. (laughs) It's 2011. You know, it's funny, I'm sitting here, and it's amazing, isn't it amazing what your brain could do? I'm going through this talk, I'm also thinking, what's my rank on Amazon right now? And I'm, and I'm, (laughs) but what I'm really thinking is, how many people in this room think I'm full of crap and I'm out of my mind, right? Versus how many believe, and I think a lot still, they don't think I'm full of crap, they're just, they don't think it's practical, they don't think I understand. You know, it's not your industry, we're different. Everybody does that, whether it's a CPG company, an NFL team, no matter who we consult for, it's always the same story to me. It's, you don't get it, Gary, this is, you know, we're a different business, we have our different dynamics. I do get it. I get it very carefully. We are in the people business and people have never been more attainable than ever. People used to spend billions of dollars in focus groups, throwing people into rooms and trying to figure out what they thought in the back room of a mall and knowing that people were watching them, that is not a natural environment, right? These people are giving you feedback on you every day. If you're not searching your name or your company's name or your branch's name on search.twitter every day, you're nuts. You're absolutely nuts. You're leaving amazing data on the table. This is extremely real. This is happening every day. Zappos, a company that's based here in Las Vegas, sold for a billion dollars to Amazon because this stuff is real. You know why? They cared about their end user and they scaled it. They reversed the game. They timed how long people were on the phone, not to be as short as possible, but to be as long as possible. Guys, this industry, more than any industry to me, hands down, should understand the impact and the ROI of social because it is a people business. This is a people industry, it's happening, and when you look at 50% of your incoming customers or your growing base is at an age group where this is where they communicate and when they understand, this is not, this is a necessity. And you know what I hate? That I know a lot of people are sitting in this room and saying, yeah, but Gary, I didn't grow up with this. I'm older, I didn't grow up with this. You didn't grow up driving, you figured it out. This is not an age thing. This is a DNA thing. I, I am so far from Mother Teresa. I'm not here because it's zen and let's take care of everybody. I wanna buy the New York Jets. This is real cash. One thing I didn't tell you because I was embarrassed, my first real business wasn't lemonade stands. My first real, real business was I would go into people's yards, rip up their flowers, ring the doorbell and sell them back to them. <laughs> Great business by the way, low overhead, quick turnaround. I really, you know, it's really funny. I wrote a book, right? I mean, I believe in traditional. I think you should do everything you still do. But please, don't close out where it's going. I learned something the other day that killed me about corporate America. One of my corporate clients, we're crushing for them. They're even tying in our community management, what we're doing on Facebook, to the aisle in the supermarket. Like, real numbers. Like, you know, because this woman is now a fan of our product, instead of buying the old cereal that she used to buy, she now buys ours, because when she goes in the aisle, the people she talked to on the Facebook page, under our umbrella, and we helped her with a nursery school recommendation, we now have the emotional equity with her. She goes in the aisle, and she doesn't care if the other cereal's 30 cents less, she's buying ours, right? We're getting there. We're getting to where I want to be. 2015 stuff. What happens when you own the emotional equity? The stuff that's coming. We own that. It's here. And then their stock price crashed the other day, right? And you know what happened? They went to tried and true. They walked in and said, let's cut all the social media stuff, right? We need more TV. And I sat there and I said, my God, it's so obvious because I'm looking at the numbers. They have numbers on TV, what it's supposed to generate in store for the dollars and the data doesn't match up. You know why the data doesn't match up? Because Nielsen ratings are bull crap. The data doesn't match up, but when it gets tight, and you know this guys, we all know this. This is why less people were at this convention last year than they are this year. When things get tight, people retreat, right? They go to tried and true. I was sitting there, I was like, my God, this company going to TV now is only gonna accelerate their death. I'm like, 
you don't go to what got you there when it's bad. It's like if Charlie Sheen started doing more coke today. You don't, you know? You don't go back to what got you to the bad place. You go in a different direction. This is the moment when you start looking at what's actually working, but here's the problem. And here's what you have that they don't have. And this is what smaller businesses and people-based businesses have that corporate America doesn't have. You're not reporting to the street. You're not giving them quarterly numbers. They're playing a different game. You, my friends, can absolutely run the marathon that building a business is. It's what you've been doing in a lot of ways. You can run the marathon. The way we're gonna be building businesses in 2015 to 2025 is the way that our grandparents built businesses in the 1930s. The way the butcher knew you came in, they knew Timmy was your son, and they're gonna cut your steak exactly like you want it, is the way it's going. We just lived through the big box era. If you know business, you know it goes up and down. We are going to that place. I know so much about my customer today, it is unbelievable. And if I put the effort and allocate the funds towards executing against it, we're gonna win. I spent millions in traditional, hundreds of thousands at best on my personal brand and this new last five years of marketing for Wine Library myself and the returns aren't even close. It's real money, it's real numbers. I'm not joking on theory here. 